Hello everyone. Today we are going to uh, talk about our revision worksheet and the revision lecture. The objectives that we have covered during the two uh, revision weeks. First of all, let's together remember what was our lecture about. Our lecture was about uh, a comprehension theme, which was facing challenges. Now we are going to discuss in details what do we mean by facing challenges. It was about the writing process. How do we start writing a paragraph? What are the steps for writing a paragraph? And the third topic was the parts of speech. And we explained in details in class what do we mean by parts of speech and what is each part used for. Today we are going to wrap up all the uh, ideas and all the topics we have covered in the worksheet and uh, we'll talk about them. First of all, let's start with the icebreakers. As you all know, we usually start with icebreakers. These are activities kind of fun activities that are done in class just to break the ice between the students and their new teacher. We started with the first uh, activity, which is my favorites. It's a list in which every one of you write his favorite, uh, for example, gum, his favorite movie, his favorite store or brand, favorite season, and so on. Uh, and the second, part of the uh, worksheet was the comprehension part. Now we are going to start first with the comprehension part with the theme which is facing challenges. So first of all we are going to start with the comprehension part. Let's together talk about what do we mean by facing challenges. When I say facing challenges, it means that I am facing a certain difficulty, a certain obstacle, a certain circumstance. It means I am facing something which is difficult to overcome and I'm being strong enough in order to face it. Some people face a certain uh, physical disability. Some people face a certain mental disability. Some people face a certain obstacle like poverty, like lack of education, like a certain disease, a certain illness. Some people face cancer and so on. So this is what do we mean by facing challenges. So as a meaning in English, facing challenges is to have to deal with something that needs great mental or physical effort. Sometimes it needs a mental effort and sometimes it needs a physical effort. And now I am going to explain why in order to be done successfully and therefore tests the person's ability. Your ability tells about your determination, your uh, persistence, if you are determined in order to face these challenges. So sometimes people are obliged to face certain challenges such as diseases, physical disability, mental disability, a certain difficulty at school. A student might face a certain difficulty in math, a certain difficulty in physics. These are also challenges that a student must overcome. Okay, here there are some quotes about uh, facing challenges. Let's together read the quotes and explain them. First of all, the first quote says, a smooth sea never made a skillful mariner. It means if your life is always quiet, it doesn't make you a strong person. The second quote says, the storm also beats on the house that is uh, built on the rock. So even if you are very strong, even if you are a determined person, no matter what, you are going to face some challenges and difficulties in life. Great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from medicore minds. So usually people who have great spirits have passed through difficult times and these difficult times made them strong people.
So the first team that we are going to start with is uh, facing challenges. Uh, in this unit, uh, we are going to discuss the essential tool of facing challenges and overcoming difficulties. This is a theme that you already took uh, previously in grade six. We will also learn about the importance of having determination and persistence to face struggles and achieve triumph. This is a core theme throughout grade seven, English also. Here are also some quotes. We are not going to read them now. We are going to skip these quotes because they are already written in the worksheet and we have already covered them. We are going to uh, start with uh, the challenging, uh, some cha cha facing challenges keywords. These words are very important because they are uh, thematic words. They are related to the theme. First of all, uh, we are going to start with determination. Another word for determination is firmness and antonyms uh, antonyms of uh, for example determination is persistence termination faith and inconstancy these are some also of the thematic words or vocab words we are going to start with the first word determination determination is a quality it's a certain trait in someone it makes this person continue trying or achieving something example sentence he is firm in his determination to translate his ideas into reality willpower is the second word to have the willpower it means to have the strength to have the ability to do something so she made herself get better by sheer willpower for example Okay, bold, being bold is being brave, being courageous, being strong enough to try something new. As an example, it was a bold move on their part to open a branch of the business in France. It means it was a courageous uh, move. It was a brave move. Purpose. Purpose is the aim, is the goal of a certain person. What is your purpose? My purpose is to do something. It's my goal, my aim. For example, large quantities of water are needed for cooling purposes. Cooling purposes, yani the aim or the goal is the uh, cooling, uh, cooling purpose. Pursue is to pursue is to follow a certain goal. So if you are passionate about something, pursue it, yani follow it. Follow your dream. Achievement is a result gained by effort. Reaching this agreement so quickly was a great achievement. It's something that you achieved, something that you gained. Now let's start with the exercises. As you can see here in the exercises, we start with the first one. It's using words in sentences. The first two words are pursue and determination. One of the sentences that we used in class was, it requires determination and passion to pursue a dream. The second one is willpower and achievement. It's by mistake written three and four. It should be two and three. Um, so the sentence here is, she achieved her goal by sheer willpower. We used the two words. And the third sentence, we should use purpose and bold. Few politicians have been bold enough in the purpose of opposing the plan to cut taxes. These are the three sentences we used in, uh, we used the vocab words in. Now we move to the second exercise, uh, which is filling in the blanks. I will also read the answers briefly. We already solved these in class. In exercise B, it says, after university, she was still undecided as to what career she wanted to pursue. She wanted to start, she wanted to follow. Her ambition and determination ensured that she rose to the top of her profession. Number three, Poland was already making bold economic reforms. It was a remarkable achievement for such a young play, player. Sorry. Number five, many smokers have used willpower to quit smoking. In order to quit smoking, you should be very strong. You should have willpower. 
exercise C give two examples on how determination can help you overcome challenges how can determination help me overcome challenges first of all determination means having a greater ability to control your life so this will help you achieve your goal and the second one is that determination helps you stay positive in the face of challenges you will stay positive you will have this positive spirit these positive vibes number two how do you fight to reach to your purpose how first of all miss you have to know that you were born to do something right the second you have to set a goal the third you have to get away from your worries and doubts move forward for your goal and do not get distracted in this way you will achieve your uh, goal and you will reach your purpose number three how can willpower help you reach your goal what career do you plan to pursue and why these are questions three and four let's start with with question three how can willpower help you reach your goal first of all willpower will always provide you with the ability to resist short-term temptations while you focus on long-term goals it gives you the capacity to override unwanted thoughts feelings and impulses Number four, what career do you plan to pursue and why? Everyone has a different opinion. So this is an opinion question. It's based on your own uh, opinion. Now we are going to start with the first um, part of the comprehension worksheet, which is um, about Helen Keller. As you all know, uh, Helen Keller is a woman who faced a certain illness when she was uh, young uh, she uh, was deaf and blind uh, and she had this illness because of a certain high fever she got when she was young and this led her to become um, a deaf and a blind person but she achieved lots of things in her life now we are going to talk about Okay, so we're not going to read the text here uh, because we already read it in class. I will only uh, some um, this, I will only wrap up what the text talks about. The text talks about Helen Keller, who is a deaf and blind American author, activist, and lecturer. She had a certain disability, um, a physical disability. She was blind and deaf because of high fever when she was 19 months. But Keller did not give up. She uh, went to school, she went to college, and she was one, the first person to graduate from college, first deaf and blind person. And she achieved lots of things in her life, even though she was blind and deaf. Also here, they are talking about her achievements, about what she did in her life, about um, the achievements that she achieved, and um, everything about her based on uh, real information. These are facts, years, and so on. Uh, before I move to uh, writing, I am going to move uh, to the comprehension questions in uh, the worksheet. Uh, in the worksheet, they are asking about um, the first question is asking about the first question is asking about uh, Helen Keller. How did she get her disability? So we said that she got her disability from a fever. It was caused by a fever. Number two, according to paragraph four, how did Anne Sullivan change uh, Helen's life? Anne was able to instill discipline in Helen. Helen was a spoiled child, as we all know, and she learned her how to communicate through signs. Number three, describe Helen Keller by giving two traits. Um, we can say that she is determined, she is persistent, she is bold, she is ambitious, all of these. 
Number four is saying what is the purpose of the text. The purpose of the text, of course, is to inform. This is a biography, and usually biography's purpose is to inform. It provides us with information. What is the genre of the above text? The genre of the above text is a biography, as we all know. Let's start with exercise B. And with the following statements are false, rewrite each one correctly. Let's start. Helen and uh, had the illness for a long period of time. No, she had the illness when she was only 19 months old. Uh, and Sullivan did not accept to treat Helen, which is false, and accepted to treat her. Uh, Helen was a quiet and polite child. This is also false because Helen was a spoiled child and Anne Sullivan uh, is the person who uh, set, uh, instilled a discipline in uh, Helen. Now let's start with exercise C. Exercise C is the chronological order. It's a chart, it's a flow chart actually, in which you fill in the uh, correct information. Let's start with the first year in 1882. Helen became blind and deaf in 1887. Her parents contacted Alexander Graham Bell. In 1904, Helen graduated from Radcliffe College. In 1915, she founded a non-profit organization. And in 1964, she awarded her Presidential Medal of Freedom. Let's move to vocab. The first one is traumatic. Number two is discipline. Number three is exhausted. And number four is tremendous. Let's move to pronoun reference. And let's start with her. Her in paragraph one refers to Helen. He, he in paragraph two, uh, three refers to Alexander Graham Bell. They in paragraph three refers to Perkins Institute. And number four, her in paragraph four refers to Anne Sullivan. Let's now start with the six stages of the writing process. We said that we start with brainstorming, which is thinking about ideas and jotting them down randomly using words and phrases. This is what do we mean by brainstorming. It can happen through discussion. It can happen through open book. It can happen through uh, watching a certain video. It can happen through searching the internet and so on. Then we start planning. The planning is usually filling in a graphic organizer or an outline. Yeah, a cause effect chart, a story map, um, compare contrast, the Venn diagram, or an outline. Writing your first draft is to write your ideas that you brainstormed and organized. After that, we move to step four, which is revising. I revise my ideas. I check if there is any mistake, grammatical, punctuational, any kind of mistake. And then I move to the final, uh, to the, uh, sorry, to step number five, which is editing. I correct my mistake. And then I move to the final draft in which I write the uh, final draft, the draft which is, um, which has no mistakes, okay? Okay, now we are going to move to grammar. In grammar, we are going to talk about the parts of speech. And we will start with the uh, definition. What are parts of speech? Part of speech is a category to which a word assigned to accordance with its syntactic functions. In English, the main parts of speech are noun, pronoun, adjective, determiner, verb, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and interjection. These are the kinds of um, uh, pronouns, uh, sorry, the kinds of uh, parts of speech. Let's start with the noun. What is a noun? A noun is the name of a thing, a person, an animal, a place. The name of anything around us is called a noun, such as pencil, cat, work, notebook, and so on. What is a verb? A verb is an action or state. For example, open, close, read, write, run, play, watch, wash. All of these are verbs. Adverb. What is an adverb? An adverb is a word that describes the verb. It usually describes the verb, the adjective. For example, I say she opened the book slowly. 
So I asked myself a question, how did she open the book? She opened it slowly. So slowly describes the way she opened the book. So it's describing the verb. So from this, I know that slowly is an adverb. Let's move to the adjective. What is an adjective? An adjective is a um, word that describes the noun. So I say Ali is short. So short is describing Ali, the noun, then it's an adjective. I say the classroom is quiet. Quiet is describing the classroom. The classroom is a noun, so quiet is an adjective and so on. What is a pronoun? A pronoun is a word that replaces the noun. So I say, for example, Ali opened the door. Where is the noun This in the sentence? The noun in the sentence is Ali. So I can replace Ali with the pronoun he. So I say he opened the door. The teacher explained the grammar lesson. Where is the noun? The teacher. What can I replace the teacher with? I can replace it with she. So she opened the uh, door. Preposition. Preposition is a word. It links a noun to another word and it also shows us the time or the place of an object like for example the book is on the table uh, I will arrive in 10 minutes um, his flight is um, at uh, 10 p.m. all of these are prepositions conjunctions they are words that join clauses or sentences like the fan voice or uh, the subordinating conjunctions, like for example, I am very hungry, but the fridge is empty, so here but is a conjunction. The interjection, it's a short exclamation. We use it usually in exclamatory sentences like, oh, hi, ouch, wow, oh my God, all of these are called interjections.